Pilots, welcome back to Motion RC Live for episode 7. And uh, we are going to be talking a little micros today, more towards the end, probably the last half hour or so, because I don't know if you remember last week we had George and Steve on. We didn't really get a chance to go around the custom customer community, which is definitely something I want to incorporate because there's no reason to not include all the amazing things happening, whether it's on Hobby Squawk or Facebook or YouTube uh, per se, because our customers take our products and do miraculous things with them. And a few of them are in the live chat right now, like Jeremy Salt. You've seen him. We shared a lot of stuff that he does. He makes some cool stuff and so many other guys do a lot of cool things as well. So again, yes, today we will talk XK in a little bit. I have the XK Edge A430. We'll do an unboxing of that and hopefully unbox these. I don't know if I'll get them both. I mean, they go together pretty easily. I'm sure I'll have them built uh, before the end of the show. But then we could just go around a few of these products we've had on our website for a while. There's definitely videos you can check out of them flying. Funny enough, uh, it's been a long time since I've actually flown indoors. Um, I haven't found an indoor fly-in around my area. Maybe they exist. Maybe I just haven't been looking. But a lot of these products are also perfect. I saw a couple people say that... Uh, you know, they're looking for good products to fly indoors, and XK makes a great line of products um, for the price they have them at with the options included. They're really good line, and we hope to get more and more of the XK line uh, over time. So I was going to start today. Funny story. Um, so we have a bit of, I met a RC celebrity, an actual real celebrity, who happens to fly RC. Um, so the other day, I signed into Facebook as I start my morning, and I see in the Roban RC Facebook group, I see this picture pop up. And I made a quick little funny comment, and I just said, the man has a great taste in Roban helis and also football teams. As you might know, I am a diehard New York Giants fan, been that way my whole life, and it turns out he replied to me saying, well, I used to play for them. It is Steve Baker, who actually caught a touchdown pass in Super Bowl 25 for the New York Giants, the year they defeated the Buffalo Bills on a missed Scott Norwood field goal. So I was so pumped to have a Facebook chat. We became Facebook friends. And uh, that was probably the first game. I was nine years old when that game played, and that was probably the game that made me a Giants fan. Nobody in my family even liked football. I'm about the only one who ever watched and then ended up playing in high school and such. So to get a chance to talk to that guy, and, you know, he flies a lot of other RC stuff, and he said he'd happily join us on our live stream one day just to talk RC. I'd love to know. Uh, if he was flying back when, um, back during his playing days, like was that a way for him to, you know, just chill out in between games and such, maybe take some planes for a flight, or maybe it's something he found after he retired, because he played about six seasons for the Giants, um, a little before my time though, you know, when you're nine years old, you're watching, but you're not really paying attention in that way. So I'm so excited to, uh, possibly get Steve Baker, the touchdown maker on the show, uh, in the future. Now we're going to go around to some other things happening on the community. And I think the biggest thing that we saw this week, guys, Joey Jorgensen, or if I said that wrong, Jorgensen or Jorgensen, I think it's Jorgensen, shared his AWACS AL37 Custom, uh, giving Jeremy Saltz KC-135 Tanker a run for its money. And what's annoying about Joey, Joey has failed yet to tell anyone just how he's done it. So, um... What do you guys think? How do you think he accomplished the dome on top? I'm going to assume he molded foam and he's got a little brushless motor uh, attached under there with maybe like a spinner back plate on top of the motor. But this was all he shared and he hasn't answered any comments, at least that I saw up until the point of this video. So if you guys can uh, let me know, that would be really that would be really awesome because I think this is something that... You know, I, I hope to see this fly. I hope he gets out and gets some video of this in the air. I'm so interested in how, you know, is that going to create lift? Because a lot of guys were saying the real AWACS plane, that radar dome, actually does generate lift for the aircraft based on how they mount it. And, um, or I'm just wondering, would the wind on something like this, because the way it's mounted, could it just rip off? I mean, I have no idea, but I'm so excited that he did it. And I'm wondering, he might have even contacted uh, Jeremy. Jeremy, you could let us know. Maybe he, um, did he contact you on how to install the extra nozzles? Because he went to the 747 style. He added two extra motors and such. So he really, it looks like a similar base as yours was. 
and unbelievable. I know a few people wanted to do that, and that's the first time I saw it, and I think he wins the day uh, <laughs> for, for that. So then, well, moving on, Bob Shear then, new member to Motion RC Community, and he also joined Hobby Squawk to share his T33. I think this is one of the coolest schemes of a T33 I think I've ever seen. He had a whole write-up on Hobby Squawk and the T33 thread of uh, just what the, the aircraft is. And actually forgot to write down that line of Alex. That's the one thing I forgot. <laughs> so I could jump on there maybe in a little bit. But Bob, amazingly gorgeous. Um... T33, and also he gave some tips in the Hobby Squawk thread for the T33 of just what he used to mask that off because masking between the blue and the white looks like no easy task when you're, you know, it's not in straight lines, especially on the outer side and around the mouth and stuff. He did a really bang up job on that, and I'm excited to hopefully get to see that fly uh, in the air as well with some video. So, Bob, if you're watching, get outside and get somebody with their cell phone. I don't care what it is. Definitely film that. Moving right along, that brought me to another T33. So I see a lot, uh, we see a lot of comments all the time. Oh, I wish guys made, you know, I wish we made more plain schemes so that we can customize. And you'll see that this one, Joe Shield, he took the camo T33 and just painted right over it. And for the most part, anyone who painted the camo, L uh, any of the L39s, Jeremy Salt did a video for us that's on our YouTube channel of him customizing one of our L39s, you could go right over the decals on these things and make pretty awesome liveries. And he shared this up, and I can't wait to see what he does with this when he gets his Cali graphics in. But I'm happy that Joe Shield decided to share that with us. So you can see, I mean, right over the top, he just put the blue right over the camo. It didn't even look like he did any, uh, he didn't even put primer as a base. He just went right over it. And I'm sure it's one of those things that's gonna look fantastic. You'll never notice that it wasn't an all-white prime plane before he started painting it. So moving on to the next one comes from our good buddy Giancarlo. If you know Giancarlo Trezza, he goes to Jonal every year. He's been on a few of our Jonal event videos. He has an actual simulator in his trailer. But he was getting low passes on his AL37, and he shared a little slow-mo clip here that we're putting in. And he does a touch-and-go without the landing gear. And I'm actually surprised that those, nas those nacelles hung on tight. Because I would think if you tap those anywhere, they would tend to just rip off. But, yep, he did a full tap and go in his gorgeous custom AL37. Awesome work, Giancarlo. Excited to see you at Joe Nall. I know you'll be there. And we're definitely going to be doing some AL37 gaggles, T33 gaggles. And hopefully, he was the guy that, if you guys remember, back at Nall in the fall, um, I had my lit up LED'd out F-22 stolen from me, and I don't forget it. Um, it's not going to happen again, but uh, he had an Avanti done by the same guy, TGK Connectors, uh, and we flew those together in that night flying video, so I hope to get another LED jet ready to go for either Null or at least for Null in the fall. And then lastly on Facebook, the other cool thing we saw was another, I believe, new member, Greg Thomas. He did his F-14 Black Bunny, so the Playboy Bunny showed up again, and it looks awesome. I love the all-black schemes, even though the sun doesn't really like all-black schemes, but <laughs> but I love all-black schemes. I think they look cool. He already, You could already see there was some bubbling on there, but I don't know if that's because he's already flown it or if maybe it was bubbled before he even did the painting, but either way, it's one of those that if you're going to paint your plane in black, expect it to bubble up. It'll look good from far. It just won't look that nice when you're very up close, but it looks really awesome there. So we're going to move along in the customer community over to Hobby Squawk. So a couple nice posts came through. Another, and again, this was like a whole week of just awesome customizations. So this one comes from you, uh, you Weedman. He did his Avanti. Uh, the red Avanti, and he just added some awesome detail to it with the yellow uh, tires or the yellow rims on his tires, added more extra yellow and red, yellow around the canopy. I actually did something similar to my yellow Avanti. I painted the canopy instead of it normally being white, I believe. I painted it silver. It just adds an extra little level of detail to it. And you can see he added the cockpit pilots, did some work in that interior cockpit. I mean, that looks like a lot of 3D printed parts. Uh, fantastic. 
I will get to your comments in there. I see Frank, you're saying, James, anything new coming out? There's always something new coming out, but when you when when we're ready to tell people, we will tell people. And what the point of this live show is, when we do have something new to come out, it's going to happen here. So if we are ever going to announce something new, we're going to let everybody know probably at the start of the week to tune in to our Friday live show. And speaking of the Friday noon show, um, again, this is only the seventh episode um, that we've done. And this was more proof of concept, and I think it's going well. But eventually, I believe Alex and I are going to take this show from Friday at 12 p.m. in the afternoon to one of the evenings. Probably like a 6 or 7 p.m. show, more on like a Wednesday or a Thursday. Because even now that I think about it, you know, everybody wants to, if you're going to take a three-day weekend, you want either Friday off or something like that. It would be hard to stick to a Friday. And also, we know 12 p.m., most people are at work. So it's not the type of thing that everyone could tune in. So we're thinking of jumping to one of the evenings during the week. So it would just be a matter of us taking the mornings off and then just working uh, longer through the day. So we're, we'll get to that. And I see somebody, when we'll be able to buy a Henlong tank. More info on that in this episode because that container has arrived. It's just a matter of the warehouse getting them unpacked and getting them listed. So any any day now, any hour now, any minute now, you could see a Henlong tank. But we'll talk about it in a little bit. So moving on, on Hobby Squawk. The next thing I saw, an OV-10. So the ProFly OV-10, uh, which I have hanging up behind me. Love that aircraft. Finally, someone decided to rip the covering off or re-scheme it. And uh, I only got these two pictures from him, Didier N. He took... Um, yeah, he put it in a German scheme. So a nice German OV-10. And he also uh, did something with... Obviously, he's not using the struts that came with the uh, with the OV-10. Because he's got a really, really crazy nose gear on there. Looks... Uh, I don't know if that's more scale or not. But, man, that would be... Uh, that looks pretty cool. So I hope he also posts some videos. The Profi OV-10, that balsa kit, is is really amazing and it's such a solid flyer you guys could check out the videos of me flying it and if you're going to be going to joan all um you'll i'll definitely be bringing it there and wesley miller who i see is in the chat mary boozers what's up man wesley sometime probably in march maybe april um is going to be coming out here to uh spend the weekend with me at my house jump on our live show and fly some of the uh, aircraft that he hasn't flown on his channel that we have here. And we're just going to make a little day of it and get prepared because I think he'll also be at Joe Nall. And whether or not he's helping us out or not, I'll let him fly anything I got because, you know, he's he's an awesome pilot. So Wesley Miller, you're flying the OV-10 this year. I don't know if he, did he fly it? Do you remember? So. I don't think he flew the OV-10. You know, I think I... He flew the Fairchild. I don't th he flew the Fairchild, of course, but I don't think I let him fly the OV-10 maybe because I was just... I don't know. It's... <laughs> I wanted it. <laughs> I guess, if you will. All right. Uh, on Hobby Squawk, another cool thing. You T-33 pilots. If you're looking for a detailed cockpit set, check out Radar Guy in the T-33 thread. He uploaded a bunch of STL files for free, and I don't even think he has them on Thingiverse. He might put them on there, but he just has them in the thread. So you're seeing uh, the thread itself, and check out the parts that he made for the T-33 cockpit. So if you guys want to, you know, if you guys want to, uh, you know, bust out and really up your T-33 cockpits, um, you know, and really highly detail them, and you have a 3D printer, or you want to get them 3D printed, just download those files, and uh, you should be good to go. I was thinking of giving it a shot on mine as well, because uh, I actually never did one of the cockpit sets on my own. I do have a 3D printer, and I saw somebody made a comment, nice 3D printer tablet stand. Alex made me bust out the tablet instead of looking at my phone for there, and about an hour and a half ago, I said, I have nothing to stand it up. Jumped on Thingiverse, found a print that took an hour and 15 minutes. It was ready five minutes before we went live. That's the beauty of a 3D printer. You can get your need. Uh, Airborne Jetwatch, you want those on Thingiverse as well? Uh, well, that's Radar Guy. I don't know who Radar Guy's uh, real name is, so I don't know if he has them on Thingiverse. You could search T33, but just jump on Hobby Squawk. You could download them for free um, right there. So, you know, you don't even need Thingiverse to also download them for free. But, uh, you know, those weren't made by us. That is customer community, guys. The guys who do 3D printed stuff is awesome. 
So now we could talk a little bit about the Henlong tank. So again, we said the uh, the warehouse has received our first shipment. Warehouse is just sorting them through, getting everything ready before they go live on the website. So it could happen probably latest, maybe Monday if they don't finish today because our warehouse is closed on the weekends. But we got a big container, had a lot of other stuff as well as the Henlong tanks, but they are in there and they are coming. So on Hobby Squawk, um, you guys want to jump on there because Alpha himself, our own Alpha, uh, has been customizing a King Tiger, and my goodness, the man is just, I don't know where he finds the time to do everything else, but he's been sharing an updated build log or a custom log of how he's been doing this um, King Tiger, and it looks absolutely fantastic. That's the one thing I love about the Henlong tanks. As far as the price is concerned and all the features you get, for RC in general, but even without them, they just look like great static models. Like they just look awesome sitting on your shelf or sitting on your table. Like they're just something that you put over the on the fireplace mantle. Like if you do it upright and for you guys that know how to airbrush, know how to detail and can really add that extra, extra, you know, life to these things, man, you could really take one of these tanks and turn it like, like everybody does with the aircraft. You can do it with a tank and my goodness, the, uh, the results are absolutely stunning on that front. So Alpha, good job on those. I've been following that thread. And if you guys are interested in just any techniques, Alpha knows his stuff uh, when it comes to doing that kind of thing as well. So now as that'll about do it for the customer community this week, um, that was awesome. Um, it seemed like everybody was just customizing aircraft this week. I don't, I don't know what, what it was, but it was like one day at one, every other hour, it was somebody's posting something that's just absolutely phenomenal. So as you saw in the title, it said talking XK, Mi XK micros and upcoming contests. So we actually have two upcoming contests that I think are going to happen maybe in March or a little thereafter, but one definitely in March and we'll start there. If you guys remember last year, I came up with this March Madness uh, plane tournament that we, a lot of fun. We gave away, I think, a $100 gift card or something to the winner. And basically the way it worked was me on my own. I did some research just on various magazines and websites. A lot of people have lists of the 100th greatest jets or the 100th greatest warbirds. So I kind of compiled a bunch of those. And I found the top 32 warbirds that came up the most among all lists and the top 32 jets that came up most and then i made if anybody has ever watched or joined an ncaa 64 i don't really watch college basketball but i've done a lot of brackets in my life just because of the fun of it um i laid them out on a bracket and had everybody vote and the a10 ended up being the big winner of the contest last year just in, and you can see all the red numbers on there those were the votes everybody went in and voted on each individual matchup as I release the results. Um, I found a better way to do it this year, but I'm thinking for this year, I was trying to come up with another way because obviously you can't keep just throwing random planes out there. So I'm thinking if I was going to do the March Madness tournament again, if you guys are interested, you know, to win, I'm thinking of doing it with customer communities, customized aircraft. I would love to find 64 pilots or more, what the way I think it would work is probably March 1st, I would announce, um, I put a thread on Hobby Squawk, and I'll let you know here, where everybody could submit their favorite plane, Motion RC plane that they've customized. Just all I'm looking for is one picture and your squawk handle. And if we get 100, if we get 200, at least if we get 64, the goal would be, then we'd have 64 customized planes we'd make a bracket and then everybody would be able to then go in and play the game just you know pick your winners all the way through each matchup the way you would fill out an ncaa tournament bracket and then we would be able to give two prizes first would be if you're one of the top 64 customized aircrafts that we believe deserved to be in the tournament if your plane ends up being the one that wins you would win an award you would win a gift card and then everybody else who joined to play the way you would any other standard uh, NCAA March Madness pool, 
Um, if you ended up being the winner who gets the most points, because the way the NCAA tournament bracket works is, I think you get one point for the first round, two points for the second, four, and it keeps doubling as you go through. So you don't necessarily have to have the most right answers. You just have to have the most right answers in the right places. But then if you're the person who wins, you would also get a gift card. I thought it was really fun, just a way. I like to intertwine sports with anything, because I always think a 64 bracket, again, is fun. It's not always the best way to pick a winner, because depending on where you're placed in the bracket, like the A-10 won last year, but had it been in another section, maybe another plane would have beat it uh, based on the votes, but sort of just the way it works. But if you guys think that's something cool, I'm going to put, um, I'll put something in Hobby Squawk this week that you guys can jump on or we'll talk about it on Facebook, but I think it should be fun. And I think I should be able to find 64 pilots who have at least customized one Motion RC aircraft. So my thought is guys like Jeremy Solt who customize every single aircraft, you're not going to be able to be in the bracket more than one time. So it'll be whatever you think is your best your best aircraft that you ever customized. You would just share one picture, and that would be the one that, go, that would go up and in. And then everybody in our company will have the customer service team, Alpha, me. We'd go through all the submittals, and we'll select the 64 finalists who would make it in the bracket. And then everybody, eventually, once we pick the bracket, we release it. And we have a website that'll allow everybody to sign up, and it'll uh, it'll tally scores automatically, so everybody would know where they go and be just a fun contest. Contest. So I think that would be really fun to again award all the people who do such great customizations. Because if we could, we'd send out gift cards to everybody for everything we saw. But you know, it's just what you can, you can't do that. So it would be fun though to have that tournament. And then Al uh, Alpha Alex. Then Alpha, um, he has an idea for a contest coming up. Now, this one is fun. We tried it uh, with the Tech One Air Titan, but it, it, it was too short a window. It didn't get much traction, and we'll make this bigger. But he's been talking with Freewing, and I guess they're going to be repainting uh, one of the Freewing models um, upcoming, like a new design. And he's thinking of possibly putting it out to the world um, for you guys to just to draw the design yourself and if your design is selected your design would go into the product would be the new production version livery that would go on this aircraft and we'd obviously send you one of the first ones off the line like they send me when it's time to do uh you know to do a video you'd be one of the guys that we'd be able to send it to because it would be your livery and uh i think that's really awesome so you'd be able to say man i actually drew that and now the funny thing is you don't have to be a great artist. Like, you just have to use Microsoft Paint. You could make it, you know, you could just put the colors. It doesn't have to be perfect. Our team would then take your concept and turn it into what you'd want to see. But, you know, the idea would be we'd, we'd give you a top-down view of an all-white version, you know, a bottom view, side view, profile view, so you can go in, you know, with a simple software. Or even if you color printed it out, colored it, and sent us a picture, like, you don't have to be able to be computer savvy to do it. But uh, I think that would be really awesome, and I hope you guys would think that was cool. So if that's going to be coming up, that'll be coming out sometime in hopefully March or April. But uh, Alpha will definitely let you know, and if we're definitely going to do it, we'll obviously make a big stink about it. We'll share it in our emailer, we'll share it on Facebook, we'll share it on all over social media. I, I don't think it's a problem for anybody who follows Motion to find, uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm doing a good job of getting information out there whenever we have something to do. So, you know, you know the ways to get in touch with us, and uh, I think that would be awesome. So, guys, do you have any questions about any of that or anything else before we get started? Dun, dun, dun. I was just going to scan through now that I got my nice little tablet with my 3D printed tablet stand. Let's see what we got. Oh, Robert's there. Robert from Jets and Wings. Guys, he's going to be helping us out again. He's like our new EU affiliate. He's doing um, videos over in Europe. He's doing them in German, and he's going to start doing some in English as well. But uh, he's been helping us out a lot over there, and Alex and I have been working on you know, helping him with the videos and such. So we're really excited to have Robert in here. Thanks for dropping by. Did you call out our boy? Did I call out our boy? Yeah. Did I call him this? I think the first thing I said, right? Oh, did you? I Which it. one? RC, RC Aircraft RC, Boy? Yeah. RC Aircraft Boy. Shout out, man. He said he was the first one in the chat room and he asked for a shout out. So if I didn't open up with that, then RC Aircraft <laughs> Boy, I'm sorry, dude. RC Aircraft Boy. 
You uh, you get the shout out, man. That's my bad. Um, just put a drop tank on the MiG twenty one. Contest models must fly, right? Right, brothers RC. It has to be. Oh, so so when I do the March Madness contest, so that's a custom. Just as long as it's a Motion RC product that we currently sell, it doesn't have to fly. Um, I I don't need to see a video of it. It just has to be your best picture. Because I'll ask everybody to just submit one picture of that model because I have a website that when I do it, I could take all the pictures with your squawk handle because you're going to have to do it, submit it through Hobby Squawk. We just It makes it easier. Just one way, one place. So I'll just put your squawk handle, not even your real name, just squawk handle and the picture of the aircraft. That's all you know. that would be there. So then the idea is... When we announce the 64, I'll make a bracket and I'll post it like the one you just saw. Maybe you could throw up the March Madness bracket again. It would look something like this. And then it's web generated. Uh, there'll be a place where you could go in and it'll have two pictures next to each other for each round. So when you when the 64 finalists are selected, you would go in, you would log into the website and you will go down each round and and do a vote. So two, you, you'd see the two pictures side by side. Now the way the bracketing works, again. You know, it, 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 whoever wins this, if we do it, doesn't necessarily mean you have the best, you know, have the best custom out there. It may just be sheer dumb luck or good luck that you happen to be in the right bracket because that's the way the NCAA tournament works. The best team doesn't always win the championship. You know, sometimes it's just a matter of who they faced in that round. So, like, my thought process would be the way the NCAA tournament works, you got six, you really got six, four 16 team tournaments. Um, so, like, if we manage to get 16 airliners, I may make them one conference. I may put all 16 airliners so only one airliner can make the final four, you know, something like that. Um, it would be, it, it's all going to be determinate on what we get in. But, yeah, the idea would be you just share one picture of your favorite custom. If you want to share five or six of your favorite customs, um, you know, submit them, then you're leaving it on us to choose which one we believe would get in to the 64 round tournament. And again, I don't want to have multiple planes from the same pilot. If we're going to do it, I need 64 people, you know, so 64 pilots and 64 aircraft. Um, so again, it could be anything from free wing to flight line to XK to, you know, Skynetic strikes. And then next year, if we do it, we're going to throw tanks in the mix. Who knows what else we'll release this year. So we can really get crazy with uh, the scale modeling. But this year, it'll be just model aircraft. So I think it'll be really, 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 really fun. So I think that does it, guys. So I say let's get into some XK, uh, XK products. So I was going to unbox. I think I'm going to start with uh, the Edge. Did we want to play any footage of... We got the overview, if you want to... We got the over. Yeah, play the Holy overview Rise while I. XK. Yeah, yeah, guys, if you haven't ever checked the XK micros out, they're really, really nice. Nicely, uh, you know, nicely packaged. Nice flyers. Great for being in the, you know, whether you fly in your backyard. The XK helis are awesome for just flying around the outside. And obviously indoors, these things are. Most of these planes are going to be pretty safe to fly around indoors because they can fly pretty slow, especially the glider type, the glider style ones. But this is just some of the footage we had when we initially did a video. We have a few videos on the XK products now when they're out there, but I just thought, hey, we did Roban last week. We did Jets behind the scenes the week before. So it was time to uh, talk a little bit of micros while the weather, at least on our end, has still been pretty terrible. So <laughs> I wish I had an indoor place to go. So I think I'll start by unboxing the Edge 450. I did get a chance to fly this at one point um earlier i've definitely taken it to jonal i had one but uh i had an accident with one totally messed it up that was totally my fault so this is a, <laughs> this is a fresh one you know how it goes it happens to us all but again the xk edge nice size nice size box but like any other micro the box can be used as transportation so you know the plane's going to come fully assembled because again, they are made from EPS foam. But you see, with every XK product, you have two, we have two versions for the most part, at least with the planes. We have Futaba ready. So if you fly Futaba, you can buy a Futaba ready version, and you do not need 
uh, a transmitter. You can bind it up and set it up on your own. But I've always just gotten the, I don't fly Futaba, so I've always just gotten ready to fly ones, and I don't mind the transmitters that come, but every plane comes with a different type of transmitter. XK has a few, and they're pretty more than just basic. They're going to get everything done, but you can see how nicely they're packaged, and again, like most, uh, you know, micros, you're able to use this as transportation, so... You know, don't throw away the box. It's, it, you know, some, I, I think micro is something that, you know, you take on vacation. You can just throw it in the car. It's not going to hurt it. Anything like that. Let me get a, let me get a razor blade. Oh, I got a knife here. I don't know where my razor blade is now. Everything's all over the place. So let's just cut out, try to cut out the tape. Nice. bubbled up so again just get right to the plane you got your two pieces of foam that's going to help you you know keep it locked in and when you pull out the edge it is virtually ready to go so all you have to do on this one is insert your landing gear and plug it in feels a little heavy inside is that where they store the battery it's been a while since i played with this one yep battery's already in there so they got the battery just stored in there nicely. And I believe this one comes with a 300 milliamp. Uh, and that is a two cell, two cell pack, which is more than enough. Wow, you really feel that weight is like, you know, when the battery's out of it, it gets much lighter, but it's nice and nice and durable. Some plastic pieces on it. Again, the micro servos, everything's already connected. Now these do have gyro uh, stability. They do have like uh, an option some of them where you can like lower the rates on them things like that this one was you know by the last time I was flying it I wasn't as comfortable uh, when I was flying it around so I couldn't 3d it you know I'm not I'm not doing any 3d but actually while I'm taking out the baggy so baggy you're getting your prop your landing gear and a screwdriver so they give you a little screwdriver but anyway while I'm taking this out I, I need more footage, guys, of the 3D XKs. So if anybody's watching this at any time, I don't care if it's now, a month from now, if you rewatch it because you're getting into XK helis, if you can do some 3D with these ones, that would be awesome. I, I haven't found someone at my club who can do it, and uh, I've seen some people do it, but if you could share some, some footage that we could put on our website just to show people that all the helis are 3d capable um that would be awesome and i'd happily contribute a gift card you know we'll compensate you for any work you do to uh help us out but that would be really awesome if you could just you know if you could pirouette it <laughs> if you could you know do some what, what is it called again the uh what is the hurricane is it a hurricane TikTok. well tiktoks we know but i think it's the hur the outside yeah, circle you know i don't think you'll do it in this but maybe Somebody will get crazy. Don't destroy your aircraft, but, you know, a nice video that just shows people that, yes, you could practice 3D because all of them, even the scale helis, will do it. But back to this. So, again, you get your transmitter. Now, this one's the smaller one. Uh, some of the transmitters you get with some of the aircraft are going to be a little bigger, like this is the one that comes with the heli, and a version of this will come with the VTOL, the XK, the X520 behind. But um, I, I don't mind this transmitter at all. It works perfect. For these smaller ones the only thing you'll be required to bring on your own is some uh some double a batteries so you get a charger and it's a you get the brick and what you plug into and it charges through the balance tap so i'll get the uh the box out of here but you plug it in and then your battery you're just going to plug in the uh the balance lead and you got a red and a green light it's you know Pretty child's play, fool's proof as far as charging it up, but works well. But again, you could also toss that on your regular on your regular charger if you wish. So let me get that out of here. Yeah, GB, micro's definitely handy for the flying fix. Like, I know we've been having such terrible weather in Georgia. Like, it's just been rain, rain. Today's the first day the sun's outside, and of course, we had to do a 12 p.m. live show. So that's also the reason we're probably going to move to the evening because uh, it limits. We should be out getting some other flying videos done today. But uh, Alex and I, we have a beautiful weekend planned. So one of these days, uh, Saturday or Sunday, we're getting out to the field and doing some flying. But yeah, if you want to fix, like these are ones that maybe the 520 might be a little... I'm in a court 
So I'm in a cul-de-sac that has a lot of high trees around it. So this might be the type of one, yeah, you can fly it out there, but it might be a little too quick to uh, you know, be doing a lot of circles. But something like the glider, something I could fly a little slower would be nicer. <laughs> But because this thing can move, this thing can boogie. You showed the yes, footage. We have some footage you have some footage of it from the last time I flew it. So this is the footage you're seeing before uh, before it had a happy accident. <laughs> I have the other one. Uh, a happy accident. Yes, Tom Callahan. You can use your own transmitter, but only if it's Futaba. So you can get a Futaba ready version, and uh, you can bind up to it. But again, yeah, these are Futaba. Virgin, so then I'm, I'm assuming some transmitters too have, um, what's it called? Trans, uh, what do they call it? Why am I forgetting? You know, you could turn your, if you have a spectrum, you could put a, a thing on it that could turn into Futaba. It's slipping my mind. What is it called? Somebody help me, help me. Cut me, Mick, cut me. I know what you're talking about. But Everybody knows what I'm talking about, but I'm losing it. So I am going to attach the gear. And then we're going to get it plugged in, man. That takes no time. It's only 12.36. Look at that build. Oh, that's what I need. I got my batteries. Four AA batteries is what goes inside. So I've got the Duracells. Module. Module, that's Thank it. You, TNRC Module. Module, TNRC Pilot. You the man. <laughs> It's hard to do these live shows, man, and I, I I talk a lot, and then it's just like, you know, even though I'm, it's just the two of us here in the studio, when you look down and you see the chat, you realize, oh, wait, we're not alone, and then, you know, I've been doing this a long time, and it's still nerve-wracking to be live or to even do videos. It's just so awkward, but all right, so I installed four AA batteries. I'm going to plug in the aircraft, so... Again, turning on first, lights up, and you get a basic menu that does give you, you can trim, so you got trim buttons on here, um, You could, it shows you where your throttle is, so 100 on channel 3 to 100, whatever channel you move is the channel that you'll see, not that I ever look at that kind of stuff, but you know, you could see that it's at least 50 to 100 in every direction, so you know that it's, you know. Everything centered and then the buttons on the top one of them is going to be for for the 3d to 6g switch so that's just basically acro mode to a stabilized mode if if you know if i had a better way of calling it even though both modes will have a, the gyro activated but the acro mode really it's not doing that much like you have pretty much full control over it when you hit that button you go from a plane that you know, we'll make wide turns with low rates and it just becomes more of a trainer. And then when you hit that button, if you're not ready for it, you know, she, she's going to get away from you. And I think that's what ended up, what ended up happening to me, uh, with one of them. And I snapped the wing right off. And that's the other thing with this EPS or Depron. Is it EPS? It's like Depron. Do not, do not use, I don't use foam tac. Foam tac melted it. Don't use CA melted it there's um or if you're going to use foam tack you have to use a very very little bit um you will melt it if you see because i i had some damage on this one but you can see i used the wrong glue on that side of the beaver and it like ate it started eating through and i quickly just put my fingers on it and got rid of it but there's like a hole if you could see in there can you see through on it the kinda? There? yeah oh and then that side's even worse yeah there it is but she still flies like a champ, but you know, I had a nose in with that one a while back and uh, yeah, just be careful in, when you got to fix them, but they are fixable, but you want the right foam, maybe like a foam safe CA, but I have to test it. You know what? That's what I'll do. I'll probably jump on Hobby Squawk and let you guys know. I have some broken pieces of the other guy that I could throw different glues on and we could just see if it, uh, if it eats it up. So I'm just checking what the other what the other button is while I'm here. Are they telling me what the other button is? So these are all mode two when they come out. Elevator trim, that's not, it's the controller diagram. Mm -mm. I'm just forgetting for a second. It's funny, they give you CG marks on it. They do give you everything you need, but I mean, I've just tossed the battery in and went. 
it's not there's not much room where the battery can go that's sort of like what i always loved about planes like that where the battery can only fit one way you really don't have a problem oh but inside if you are binding it up if you ever do lose bind that's what this button is for so they do have a button inside you'd plug in this first and you got to hit that button and then it would bind back up so if you could see that you got it alex i think you think that <laughs> button on the side you okay, see yeah, this yeah. like this piece of metal with a black circle in it yep we see it yeah just a little clickable button mounted in there nicely so let's plug it in i have the radio turned on make sure your polarity is correct oh my tail wheel fell off i'll put that back on boop, boop, boop. nice so now we can see there it goes there we go She's in. Let's see. Do we got bind? Oh, yeah. She's got power. She's got power. Look at that. Oh, yeah. She's pretty, pretty darn powerful. And I just blew my tail right off. I blew my little wheel off. I'll get it in a second. I'll get it later. Do you see the little bits? I think so. There's like three little pieces. <laughs> <laughs> that rolled off. I guess add a little dab of Loctite. Oh yeah, they're just little like clasps. So I could see they glued it, but it wasn't glued perfectly. It happens, but we got all our pieces. So you glue the tail in, but again, you've got, so I believe this is the low rate setting. Let's see. Then when I click the button, ah, that's it. You push in on the sticks with this one. Certain of them, I don't even think the top buttons do anything. They just make noise on this aircraft. Because again, XK has a bunch of different aircraft, so not every aircraft needs every single button. So what you do is here, you can push in on your aileron elevator on your right stick, and that's going to change. And you see the elevator like drop? Mm -hmm. So I'm forgetting. Let's see, So you see gyro on, and then let's push it again. And then gyro. See, gyro will always be on, but one of them... It's actually easier to tell when you're in the air which is which so i believe this is the safe mode because it's giving me much more gyro capable and then you push it again and it, the elevator doesn't do it as much it doesn't lock in so this would be my acro mode it doesn't actually tell you what it is on there um, but it's going to open up it's going to start in the safest mode you know to take off and land and she will i i took it off from the grass a couple times and the uh and the road but for the most part you know you're just hand launching it let me get rid of these before i turn the throttle on but plenty of power and looking good so i say let's unplug this guy anybody have any questions about the uh about the edge 430 is it the 430 right yeah the edge a 430 i got all these strange numbers but i dig it and it could sit on his nose. Actually, oh, I should have shown. Remember that picture? I behind Bobby. all, <laughs> like all the guys with their three D planes. I like need. I kneeled behind it and took a picture of my, uh, you know, my performance three D plane. It's I think flight time. With Jace it. there. Uh, flight time on this when we were flying around. I mean, you're easily going for five minutes at least, at least, and if not something like this, you're probably going to be ripping around at full throttle. So, you know. I, I, but with the gliders, you're getting way more flight time than that. But I would say about, you know, it's a 300 milliamp. It's only a 300 milliamp 2S pack. But I think you're safe for about five minutes is what I remember. It's been a while since I flew them. The goal was to get this back. I definitely want to get a flight video up. So this weekend, if we, we're, me and Alex are going to go out either Saturday or Sunday, I'm definitely going to bring it and we'll do, you know, we'll get a flight review in. But I remember the biggest hurdle <laughs> for videos of these is that they're just so darn fast, they're so darn small that it's really hard to, uh, you know, to fly anywhere around, um, you know, and make it look good. So you'll see what we, do, you know, what we can come up with. We'll try to be wide. I'll try to keep it close. But for the most part, it's these things are for fun, man. You know, you're not you're not doing crazy stuff. This is something to get outside. It's cheap. It works. It flies well. And uh, just overall fun aircraft. So let's jump into the Sky King. Now, this one, I believe, is the one that does not have 
I believe it doesn't have, or it's just rudder. Yeah, so this one doesn't have ailerons. So this reminds me, if you guys remember, like the Vapor. That was one of the first aircraft I ever learned how to fly. Um, me and Alex both bought them back at what, Warbirds over Delaware? So Warbirds over Delaware 2014. That was the year uh, Mac Hodges crashed his beloved B-29. Uh, met its doom and almost, and almost killed me. But uh, flew right over my head. But um, yeah, we bought Vapors there, and that was the first thing I ever flew. Uh, wasn't a simulator. I grabbed a Vapor because a kid that we worked with, Eric Johnson, had one in the hotel, and he was just flying around the hotel, and I'm like, oh man, I need that. that so, <laughs> you know, that was super fun. So we got that, and it was, you know, again, it was just, you could, you could fly those. So this one, you could fly with just one stick. You just rudder and elevator. So, but again, a different type of, so you get a different style transmitter with this one. There's a few different XK styles. You know, not sure really why they do that. If I had an answer to you, I would give it if I had a proper answer. But you get your charger in the Sky King. You get the same, same charger balance. And again, another easy way to transport your aircraft. Keep the foam. You don't need to get rid of the foam. I do it when I bring these to, when I bring these to Joe Nall. This is how they go. Or I bring these to events. But we have two colors. We do have the red fire and we have the blue. So, you know, you and a friend could get them. But this would be a much, this would be like the perfect aircraft if you're trying to get somebody to start. Like, I have a five-year-old son. I have a seven-year-old daughter and a three-year-old daughter. And um, this is the thing that I'm going to put them on and say, just, just go for it because what's the worst that can happen? Um, you know, and I believe this foam is, this foam looks like EPO. So this foam is going to be a whole lot easier. Maybe it's EPS, but it's definitely different than the foam that's on the Edge and the Beaver. Um, the A800, so the A800, right now this one's out of stock, but coming back very soon. This is like similar aircraft, but this is going to be a front, not a pusher. But this one's going to give you aileron. So this is a glider that has a little more control than the Sky King. And I believe we have the A800 video out. If not, I'll take footage. I'll take that out too. We got footage of it, but we'll put it in. So pulling more out of the box on the Sky King. I have one of these and it binds to Fly Sky instead. MCRAD. So you're saying it binds which one? The Sky King? All of them? Cause it, it there's certain protocols like fast or SH. I'm forgetting. I'm not, I'm not a Futaba guy, but you know, there's like a couple different protocols that Futaba will bind to, and there's certain ones that, you know, certain names, but definitely information will be on the website, and if you ever need more information, guys, contact customer service. You know, I'm on the marketing side, I'm not a full customer service technician. I do my best, but I'm usually, when I don't know a question, I'm asking those guys to get me the answer, because our customer service team have one or two of every single thing we got on the website. So there is a customer service representative dedicated to said aircraft who's going to know it inside and out and let you know everything you need. So again, you got your two wing sections. Nice. And since there are no, you know, there's no control surface, it looks like they have the cutouts if you ever wanted to take. I'm sure you can add ailerons to this one if you just wanted to buy, um, you know, if you're a modeler, you can buy the small servos probably from... The, uh, the A800, and you can 100% cut in ailerons, but you don't need them. But they do give you a micro FPV tray, too. So if you have a little micro FPV camera, you know, go for it. That's something I hope maybe we'll carry uh, in the future. But you can see that this canopy is molded to, I guess, the same piece of foam that is the, uh, that is the FPV canopy. So you would fly it. It would look like that in FPV. And the plastic just locks in. Rammy RC in the house. Rammy RC, what's up, man? Rammy RC. He got one of the one of the airliners, did a bang up job, and if you check him out, he's building a gigantic Airbus 320. I think he just released a video like an hour before we went live. That's probably even why he caught us on uh, on YouTube here. But um, check out his work, man. Uh, we were so happy to have him be able to fly one of our AL37s, which looked like a baby's toy compared to the stuff that Rami's doing. It's really, really exceptional stuff. So now inside, if you want to take a quick look in the Sky King, guys, you'll see the little board. It's going to be the same board that's in the A800. So that's where you would plug in 
your ailerons if you wanted to add them in that little white port because they I believe this one has a little wide lead it came with with the ailerons connected to and you just plug that in to the wing but this one since it doesn't need it you're just pushing you're just pushing these in and the strength is gonna hold them together like I never ended up even gluing these together because they just don't have enough power to do anything I mean the worst thing that could happen to them is that you know if you hit the ground one of the wings will just pop out but I mean that's rigid as could be and you're never gonna worry about that coming out and if it does unless you want to add a tiny bit of foam tack in the middle just to make sure it never moves but then you can't take them apart you know if you want to use the uh, the cardboard or the uh, the foam as your transport so let me just grab some batteries so this one takes six double-a batteries so Duracell makes a ton of money off of Hobby King products. <laughs> I mean, of uh, motion products. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. That was like, I just went back in time. Yeah, I used to work for Hobby King. It's okay. I still got some of my old Hobby King stuff. But we'll put it in. Let's see. Everything is under two pounds. And we're going at the AMA guy. Top guys are trying to convince trick plans to get on these toys. Uh, fire blade I mean dude that's like that's conspiracy theory like craziness no guys make sure you leave your FAA comment okay um, you definitely want to do that help it out you know we don't know where we're gonna be but it's gonna take a long time before anything truly happens you know I'm not stopping nobody's stopping flying RC that's not that's not gonna happen but as of right now the best thing we can do is leave, let make your voice heard that's all but this is not, you know, there's there's got to be aircraft for everything, for every size range. This is not pushing. This is perfect. If you have a child, this is what you want them starting on. This isn't going to hurt them. This is going to be fun. This is going to be exciting for them. And also, if you're a big child like we all are, this is going to be fun in your backyard. This is going to be fun in your front yard. This is going to be fun at the local park. Take it to the beach, you know, anywhere you want to go. That's why they make micro aircraft and indoors. Like this one will be one that you can fly indoors. There we go. Now by indoors you mean a gymnasium. Gymnasium, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, you're not. I'm not flying. You know, don't fly this in your house. When I mean indoors, like an indoor fly-in, you know, in like a high school gym, something like that. If you have access to that, you'd definitely be able to to fly this around in there. You know, it flies slow. It's tame. Let's see. Is it bound up? Was this battery that they gave me not fully charged? Maybe the battery wasn't charged. We're beeping. Oh, is this the one that you have to plug? One of them you have to plug in. Maybe that's the new transmitter. One of them you plug in the plane first, and then the transmitter, and the other one you plug in the transmitter first, and then turn the plane on. There we go. There you go. So this one, so the Sky Kings, plug in the plane first, then turn on your transmitter. So I never understood why some are one way, some are the other, but do we have throttle? Yeah. And you got a little off pitch on it, but you do have elevator and rudder. So you're just flying on the right stick. So the rudder is where your ailerons would mostly be, but going on. Well, fire blades not going for it. Well, you go for whatever you need to go for, man. <laughs> I don't, you know, good for you, buddy. Awesome. And uh, what else we got on this? And this one, I don't think this one, does it have stabilization? Let me see. Push it in the stick. And no, I don't think this one needs it. Wesley, you remember, I don't believe these had two modes because it is just, you know, always on. a very simple glider. Yeah. But there's no there's no yeah, real need uh, because yeah. it's elevator rudder. Like I don't even know if the gyro would work that way. But this is one again. You don't want to be too you know without the aileron. It's going to be a slower turning, turning guy. But I'm excited to go out and fly that thing because that thing something you just sit in a chair and you go one one step. Oh, actually, before I forget, I did mess up. Forgot it came with a little spar. So then that's what's going to keep your wing from <laughs> from breaking in the sky. We've seen that once you definitely times. want to add your spar in there and you can see it through the light. So don't forget your spar. I had too much stuff on here. And again, that's why we're live. So guys, it is 1254. 
Yeah, Mary Boozer. Well, this is the same one that we flew at Null in the Fall, but that one had they had an LED option, which I think they got rid of. So um, that's why we never released that video. Me and me and Wes had already flown a similar style aircraft um, from XK, and we we were going so great. We probably were up there for about 10 to 15 minutes flying it around on the battery uh, that night, and we just never got a chance to, uh, you know, we just never got a chance to release that video. They say whatever the hobby can fly in their basements. FAA say whatever the hobby. Somebody just, you know, whatever. All right, thanks, Fireblade. But, um... What I was gonna, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so they fly around really fantastic, guys. I can't believe how fast five minutes went, but I lost my train of thought. What was I gonna say? I was gonna say something, and he made me lose. Great first budget friendly option. Yes, that's what I was going to say. And, uh, oh, Alpha's there. Hey there, we need one of your giant Airbus filled with UMX Airbuses. <laughs> Dropping Airbuses out. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, guys, I, uh, since the tanks will be arriving, um, hopefully they'll be on the website, maybe by the latest Monday. I'm not given a full confirmation, but the, you know, the container's there. I'm hoping next week I'll have some new tanks because I only ever got the two. Um, I hope that I'll be able to have uh, two, two or three newer tanks that we could do a full unboxing of them here. You know, Alpha already did this. I mean, you can basically, I think... 11 right now or 11 to 12 of the tanks that we have released we have a full video for where alpha goes through a full unboxing shows you how to set it up shows you everything he, he took each one outside on his own time sent us all that footage for us to edit and get these videos out to you uh initially but it's always fun to do it live so you can really see and watch me fumble around <laughs> putting it together but uh just to show you the full detail and you know, we love Alpha, but I think we're we're better cameramen than Alpha. So we'll be able to have some fun, but hopefully we have a couple more. And I think next week we'll get on to the tanks because we'll be rolling in to, um, you know, we're rolling into the surface world now. So it'll be great to finally get those in. And as I said, I've been enjoying the tanks. I've got the two of them and I'll put the IR systems on there. And me and my five-year-old will just play around the house upstairs or go out in the front yard and just shoot each other with him. He gets a kick out of it. So I'm definitely going to have Alex film, film us doing that and having a little fun with the tanks. So that'll be fun. I didn't get a chance to really plug in any of the helis guys, but again, we do have a video, I believe, up on the, the 123 with me flying it around. The two scale ones are beautiful, beautiful looking aircraft for what they are. Riveting on them. This one has a nose light, uh, a front light, so you can really see it in the dusk. And then you obviously have 3D options. And we have a newer option, which I forgot to give you a picture for, Alex. But uh, the X-130, so that would take the 120. It looks even beefier than that. I have not seen that one yet. But again, these will either fly scale, they all fly, they're all running on the same internals for the most part. I have a whole overview video already where I went through. Um, there's just minor little differences between each size of the, uh, at least the 3D version helicopters. Like I think the, the 100, the cheapest one on the website has is the only one with a brushed main motor. Um, but everything else is brushless. They fly really great. I'm not a heli guy, but I definitely now can orientate this all around the front yard. So I'm excited to to get my big, to, to get a bigger one going. Uh, you know, after last week seeing the Roban and now after seeing a New York Giant flying his Roban, I can't wait to uh, get out there with a heli this year. We're excited. Once this weather turns, guys, look for a lot of content coming from us. We have a lot of pilots at our field that we're going to be using to fly. And every week, hoping to get you at least a flight video, something in the studio, and then this live show. So as I said, guys, check out, uh, stay tuned for those comment, uh, contests that are going to be coming up. The first one that'll be coming up is that March Madness tournament. And again, I'm going to spread it all around. So uh, look out for that. We'll make a whole thread on Squawk dedicated to the contest. So that'll be fun to do. And then, um, you know, look out for the other contests coming up where you might be able to be the one who designs a livery on a new plane. And as always, guys, like, share, subscribe. Uh, you know, do all the beautiful things you could do. If you have nice weather, get out and fly because we finally have some nice weather. So I'm excited to get on fly. What I think I'm going to do is take Patrick. We're going to do tandem T-33s if possible. But also, he had done his Black Horse PC-9 in that Texan scheme, if you saw. And I never got a chance to do a tandem with him. So hopefully, if it's a gorgeous day, 
I'm getting the Black Horse PC9 out. And now that I talked about the ProFly OV10, I might make it an old balsa day tomorrow, Alex. Well, maybe we'll fly some balsa. But um, guys, thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope it gave you a little idea more of what's going on with the uh, with the XK products. They're really fun. They're packaged well. They fly great. They're perfect for what they are. And also, don't forget, the VTOL, I didn't even bring it down. The X520 might be the most fun. And he's $30 off uh, right now on our sales page so i think he was 139 the u.s side he was 139 and right now you can get him for 109 and he'll do it all acro mode gyro mode and then hover mode so he's really fun for the i let my daughter hover that thing around the front yard just on the sticks and it's a really fun aircraft so either way guys that'll do it for us thank you so much for joining and before i ramble on any further i gotta get out of here so we'll talk to you soon guys bye